But today, we're bringing Stuart into the conversation. What's going on, buddy? Good to see you, man. I don't know. I, I think it was less of you grabbing me and more of me constantly harassing you, being like, Adam, can I join your review? Adam, can I please join this review? <laughs> Adam, I want to talk about Lord Zed with you. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, man. I, I know you were definitely wanting to get on this episode. So, I, you know, especially after watching the episode myself, uh, I definitely was like, yeah, we got we could definitely got to bring Stuart in to go ahead and get his thoughts uh, in regards to this. Look, we got even people shouting you out. Yo, Stuart, we got Izzy in the house. Uh, so, yeah, definitely people definitely uh, good to see you around around here man who else we got in the house we got um isaiah certainly coming through thank you very much isaiah emmanuel's here today with us thank you very much emmanuel's always good to certainly see you uh and then we've got uh, marcelino definitely giving you some shout out so uh it's, it's good to see you man we haven't had your common writer reviews around here in a while i'm sure that there are some people that are sad crying every tuesday when they're like where's Stuart?" and he's nowhere to be found um so it's good to certainly see your face man and thank you very much for certainly popping up here today but um i guess if anything, Stuart, let's go ahead and start diving into Dino Fury episode number 14 titled Old Foes, which this is actually Hasbro's or I should say uh, Power Rangers Dino Fury's Halloween special here this week. Uh, I got the opportunity to see some really great costumes. I think Ali wind up popping up as a uh, as uh, uh, an astronaut, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we had um, Hunter as uh, a vampire in here, which I love just the little uh, commentary from uh, from Ali in the beginning, like weirdest mosquito I've ever seen sort of thing. I, I absolutely <laughs> love the fun that they just continue to poke at each other. We had a leprechaun by Izzy, uh, which was pretty fun. Um, Zeta wind up literally showing up as a knight uh, and leave it up to chance to certainly or chance or I should say Javi to certainly come through as his father, a zombie park warden. Uh, what do you think about the costumes here at least this year around? Uh, yeah, I definitely thought they were fun. I think, uh, you know, when I look at the previous Halloween special that they did for Beast Morphers, uh, to me, it kind of felt not as much in character as I would have expected the ones that they kind of decided to go with. But here it kind of feels like the ones that they chose really felt, uh, really felt like it was fitting everyone's personality really well. I mean, the Leprechaun one with Izzy was a bit uh, random, but well, what they did with it at the very end with that really cool visual uh, at the end, I thought that was actually pretty unique. I was I actually thought that was pretty cool, too. I actually put it in my notes like that final shot. Um, the director, I think Chris Graham, uh, the, the idea of having that that shot looking down at them, having the actors look up and then kind of all be transported sort of thing. I thought it was a really cool shot to go ahead and end the episode off. So I'm glad that you you mentioned that. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I was actually referring to kind of oh, like how they one? put like the uh, rainbow, uh, like in her, uh, uh, in, on her, on top of her hat, you know, yes. with her being the LGBTQ uh, character. And yes, I thought, I okay, that, that is sense. actually really cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that was sense. intentional, but like, you know, I still yeah. think it's cool regardless. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I, I didn't even catch that. So I'm glad you brought that to my attention for sure. Um, but this was a pretty interesting episode, man. This is actually one that I really enjoyed. I, I did not know how I was going to feel going into this episode, especially after reading the episode descriptions, you know, knowing that Lord Zed was certainly going to be back, even though we we really try and do our best to be as spoiler free as possible. There are some things that just are so impactful that it just it hits you regardless. Um, The idea of, you know, Izzy with the LGBTQ representation representation and the idea of Lord Zed, there's no way I feel like anybody in the community was able to avoid this spoiler before going into the episode. But the question that I truly had was, what was the execution of this episode going to be like? Were they going to go ahead and do Lord Zed justice, not just from voice wise, but also just storytelling wise? And I got to tell you, man, this 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 went above and beyond my own expectations I had for this episode. W what about you? Um, yeah, no, I would definitely agree. I think I went into this like not necessarily excited because I thought it was going to be a good episode, but more intrigued than anything else because I was mm -hmm. like really curious. Okay, how's because uh, I know they had a different guy voicing Zed than the one that they had in Beast Morphers, uh, which I wasn't really the biggest fan of uh the even though it was only a brief moment uh i wasn't like the biggest fan of when we heard like the new lord zed's uh voice uh from the previous season so i was definitely worried about like 
you know, a new voice again. Uh, but I thought he pulled it off really good. And then the other thing that really intrigued me was I'm just kind of like, okay, so this is more than likely going to be another clip show episode. So I'm kind of intrigued if it's going to be, uh, you know, they bring Zed back uh, and the Rangers just to beat him on the spot, or if it turns out it's not actually Zed. So those were like kind of my expectations going in. I just, I didn't expect them to do that much with him. I figured with them bringing him back on a Halloween special, it's literally just going to be there for the fans and that's it. And yeah, after finishing the episode, I'm like, wow, I could not have been any more wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely had the same hesitancy that you certainly did. Like I was not impressed with Beast more for his voice acting. And so the idea of bringing back Lord Zed, you know, for me, I, I the first person I think about is Robert Axelrod. Um, the idea of really doing Lord Zed justice with the departure of him, you know, not knowing that, um, who's going to voice him. Can they have this that same gravitas and that same energy uh, that Robert was certainly able to? Uh, and I think the idea of them bringing back the voice actor that did Evox to go ahead and do Lord Zed was probably the best move that they probably could have done because uh, it, it really works for me in here. Whoever the suit actor is certainly felt too like just some of his movements felt like classic Lord Zed. And I got to give props to Simon Bennett in here for just really showcasing the threat that is Lord Zed. I mean, the, the fact that he literally comes in and starts throwing not only mucus and slither around, but also Void Knight himself, um, seeing him tackle the Dino Fury Rangers in here, along with even some of the other monsters, uh, and kind of have his way, at least with some of the other monsters and stuff too. Uh, really immediately just sort of just um, brings me back to classic um, Lord Zed and, and even more because I felt like we haven't really seen him that physically interactive with monsters or rangers uh, before or at least in a very, very long time. So um, to immediately uh, show the threat um, and what's at stake with the idea of Lord Zed being back, I, I was really impressed. And you do bring up a good point too, Stuart. The fact that this is a Halloween special, you know, you do kind of go in there and thinking, okay, they are going to go ahead and just utilize clips and things like that. But I, I think this is the best clip show that I think we've, we've had in regards to how they utilize the clips, the idea of continuing to remind us of Lord Zed's history, right? Like all the clips certainly felt warranted to certainly be in here. And I thought it was an interesting Interesting choice to not only have Dino Fury clips, but also Beast Morphers and M MMPR clips as well uh, to really kind of just showcase the, um, I guess, the world building and the lore that is Power Rangers. I, I thought they did a really fantastic job this episode. I truly did. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. In fact, I kind of, uh, if uh, Power Rangers continues after this season, I really hope that just becomes kind of more of a common thing when it comes to the clip show episodes. I would really love them to just start uh, utilizing clips from previous seasons as well. Um, admittingly, it probably wouldn't work as well as it did with Beast Morphers, just because with that, you had Netflix going on at the time. So like all the clips that, you know, younger kids could see that they probably wouldn't have the context for, they could have easily gone to Netflix to check a lot of these out. And unfortunately, they don't have that luxury anymore uh, with Netflix no longer being around. But I'm sure there's going to be another streaming platform that's going to pick it up eventually. So I do hope they kind of continue uh, this, you know, maybe maybe not like every season, but every like first or second season for uh, every new series that they do. I think that would be kind of a, a really a really cool way to kind of get the younger kids to learn about like early history of when it kind of comes to uh, Power Rangers. Well, I think um, I know Power Rangers right now, at least on Netflix, they do have Beast Morphers up there still, Ninja Steel, and the first three seasons of MMPR. So I feel like all the connective tissues that you certainly do need from this episode, you could definitely find on Netflix, which I thought was, uh, I, I kind of like that setup that they wind up uh, putting together in here. Yeah, that's actually cool. I didn't know the first three seasons were still on there. Yeah, the first three seasons are still on Netflix, even though they are pushing them over to YouTube right now. Also, I believe they wind up actually putting another uh, grouping of um, Power Ranger MMPR um, uh, episodes over on YouTube. So yeah, you can watch them on YouTube and Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, I think okay. I think though my issue. Sorry, I got to go on a little bit of a rant. Yeah, uh, but my issue with the Power Rangers YouTube channel is that it's mixed with so many clips and episodes that, like, if you're trying to find a specific episode, uh, good luck because even the <laughs> playlist section is so disorganized. I oh, mean, okay. I just th- they need to hire someone to like fix that page up because, like, yeah, if you're going in to watch a specific episode from a specific season, uh, good luck to you. <laughs> oh, definitely, I definitely agree with you there. Um, um, but um, yeah, overall, I was pretty impressed. I will say this episode too. I want. I'm trying to think. Anytime I watch an episode, I always try and figure out too, like where they're getting their Sentai footage from, because we did get a heavy dose of Blue Ranger Sentai footage here in this episode. And I don't know if you're familiar with Real Soldier or not, Stuart. But um, going back in this episode, when I think of the Real Soldier episode, I believe this is the Melto dream episode or the episode where like uh the real soldiers get trapped in some sort of like wish world or wish dream or some sort of dream world or whatever the case may be uh and they're trying to figure their way out and i think this is an episode where melto uh, takes that step forward not so much as a leader of the team but more like the strategist the guy that they sort of come to for all their bright ideas and i think this is the episode where he gets the opportunity to even talk to his previous master uh who unfortunately passed um i believe that's the melto episode that they utilize but i thought for the most part a great usage of sentai footage to go ahead and mix it in with the woods and the hidden trail or the spooky trail that ollie found himself on uh in this week's episode so overall i i, I was a really big fan of this episode i, I thought the direction was in, in was fantastic in here by chris graham i I even was really impressed with the second unit directors and some of the great sort of um, original footage and action sequences that we wind up um, getting the opportunity to see. Um, I, I thought they handled this episode extremely well. So for me, if I had to grade it, definitely an A or an A plus for me this week for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's what actually kind of surprised me too. So I actually didn't even know there was stock footage in the episode because uh, usually I can tell because uh, I think uh, Brandon Mejia on his YouTube channel uh, pointed this out. When it's Sentai footage, uh, the suits tend to look a little bit shinier uh, and less uh, less worn. So when I was watching this episode, I never noticed that transition. So I didn't notice any stock uh, any stock footage. The only stock footage I thought they used was with uh, you know when they were explaining where Lord Zed came from, and you got you know the actual. Mm-hmm. clip show aspect of the episode but one thing that really surprised me about this episode overall i think was just um usually a clip show is just an excuse to not have to worry about spending too much money not having to worry about you know the cast having to work too hard usually it's just a way for the cast to take a nice break and then you know um that all they have to do is really deliver a few lines and then you know you don't even have to worry about filming fight scenes because you can just rely on sentai footage but there there was clearly a lot of fight scenes in here like when it came to zed obviously mm-hmm. clearly that didn't come from the stock footage right. that was all original footage so it, it just really amazed me because the the amount of of uh minutes i want to say that they used when it came to the clip show it felt very short compared to other clip shows where it ends up being at least a third of the episode uh so way less uh, of an actual clip show and then also original fights and uh that that actually were pretty well done even if they were short fights they there was pre- there was clearly money and time spent into it not just with uh directing the fights but the fact that you even had visual effects for lord zed when he uh was going all kyo ken for that brief moment moment <laughs> yeah yeah i thought that was like oh shit they pissed off lord zed here like visor turning red and everything <laughs> i mean yeah it was pretty intimidating stuff to watch but yeah you, no i definitely agree with you um you know for me when any i think for me the key to finding super sentai footage sometimes you can sometimes i will agree sometimes when it comes to the suits you can kind of tell the difference they do tend to be a little bit shinier but for me it's it's really the quality of the film um it, it, like even though i know that um, real soldier was certainly filmed in in high definition i, I think because it has been a couple of years, it feels significantly different. It just looks significantly different to me compared to the the high definition that they certainly use when it comes to the original footage in here. There is just a, a grainier aspect about the footage itself that that at least pops to me. That and then also just if you kind of scan the background, sometimes you can kind of see um, oh, yeah. le- you know wording or you can see props that might not have been in like previous shots or previous scenes from the original 
footage, but look vastly different the second time around when you watch it. Um, so th those are the type of things that I really look for, even though, yeah, sometimes it is it is through the suits. But me, it's really more about the the quality of it. But yeah, going back to the, the clip show aspect, and I, th I think that's one of the things that I enjoyed about it is that it wasn't so much a clip show of, hey, look at everything that you missed all season long they show take they showcase to us things that maybe you might have missed that were still important and relevant to this episode like the idea of how to take down the howl creature or the monster right bringing back episode eight to show how they did it then and how they go back and actually are doing it now and the idea of continuing to build lord zed's history and at least giving us a great history lesson and showing us and considering just the impact that lord zed not only had in this episode but potentially future episodes, um, I, I thought was a really great choice in how to go ahead and utilize it. Um, you know, I will say this in the panel this past week, Simon Ben Bennett did talk a little bit about Zed uh, and he spoke uh, about the idea of just the weight of the character or at least him knowing the weight of the character. Um, so I was actually really thrilled to hear just how seriously the production team went about it this uh in this particular season because that was truly one of my one of my worries but the fact that you have somebody somebody like simon bennett that knew fans were going to be worried about it and taking it seriously uh i thought spe i think speaks volumes in regards to why he's such a good showrunner for the show yeah it um you know what this episode kind of reminded me of in a lot of ways is like everything uh everything i was uh d didn't like about the movie turtles forever i don't know if you ever saw that movie mm -hmm. um it, it was an animated teenage mutant ninja turtles movie where they crossed over with the like uh two, i think the show started in like 2003 like the 2003 uh, uh ninja turtles and they crossed it over with the night no not 90 sorry 80s uh ninja turtles and while i i don't want to say it was bad because i did enjoy it and i think like they did really they had really great chemistry between like the two different teams uh one thing i didn't like about it is that it really Really felt like the writers of the new Ninja Turtles just really patting themselves on the back for that for uh, making like a superior Ninja Turtles show. So mm -hmm. the entire time when it came to the 80s aspect, it was all like treated as a joke, which, yeah, that show is definitely way more of a comedy. But in the sense of when it came to a lot of its villains, uh, the villains uh, from the 80s show were like, you know, taken down easily from the villains from the new 2000s show, uh, you know, and it was all, you know, based and the 80s Ninja Turtles barely did did anything because every time they were on screen they kept getting their asses kicked and it was always like <laughs> the 2000s ninja turtles that had to save them so uh you know i was worried when they were bringing back lord zed i think a part of me was like oh man are they gonna do are they gonna do zed that exact same way are they gonna be like oh he was scary back in the 90s but not anymore mm -hmm. and yeah i'm happy to see it's almost like the opposite it's like zed's the one you know really wiping the floor with all the modern villains which uh, is something that really surprises me but i mean i guess uh they kind of did the same thing last uh last time with beast morphers when they brought back goldar you know you have him just uh taking down the main villain that lasted for quite a while when you think about it because not only was he in dino charge but also ninja steel and a little bit of beast morphers you know he just takes him down with no issues at all so it's it's kind of funny i feel like the show runners for uh you know power rangers with simon bennett specifically i feel like he really knows the legacy that these villains have and he knows how much old school fans really like these villains and so i think he does a really good job of uh modernizing them so they're not quite as silly as they were in the 90s but also still being able to keep that cool terrifying aspect to them to show some things might have been silly back then but these were still like you know villains that scared children at the time like i i don't know anyone who didn't find zed terrifying as a kid yeah, that was my worry was that they were just going to come out and sort of neuter him. And then the idea of the Dino Fury Rangers would just wipe the floor with him with ease mm -hmm. like this guy wasn't an overlord like they mentioned. And so the fact that they do sort of infuse, again, that that threat and the seriousness and the power that somebody like Lord Zed um, truly does contain. And I think it was also really imperative too the fact that Solon gives Ali that history lesson and mentions the idea like the Rangers never defeated this guy. <laughs> you know, like it, it literally came down to Zordon expel, exp you know, expelling his his energy in order, you know, sacrificing himself in order to take them take him down. But Lord Zed's never been stopped by an actual Power Ranger team before, um, and so I think I think if anything, Simon just continues to add to um, uh, the, the the Lord Zed legacy uh, and just how powerful this guy absolutely is. And and I'm a big fan of it. And so the fact that he did that, Simon Bennett did take this seriously. 
I got to give them props because, you know, while, while, while you remember or while it reminds you of TMNT, for me, I get very Star Wars vibes here in the sense that anytime that you're dealing with legacy characters, you're always going to have a fan base that loves these characters so much and don't want to see these characters either, either either touched again uh, or brought back because they're just worried that you're just going to ruin the character for me. Um, but the fact that you do have somebody like a Simon Bennett that understands that and really does his due diligence to make Zed still that big of a threat and that impressive. Um, yeah, man, I, I absolutely loved it. So we, we literally see him reincarnated in this episode. Um, the monster this week mentions the idea that he has the ability to reincarnate any monster from any time period in their lives, and he just happens to go ahead and reincarnate Zed when he's at his most powerful moment. Um, but he's able to go ahead and get him to follow his orders because of the fact that he's got a compliance collar. Again, we got a clip show from Beast Morphers about the compliance collar, how it certainly work, works. Villains having to do your bidding if you're commanding them to do so. But once that collar is gone, the gloves come off when it mm -hmm. comes to Lord Zed and he starts beating that ass. And now that you see that Lord Zed has dispersed he even mentions the idea that he's going to maybe even try and find his staff. I fully expect this guy to certainly come back at some point in time. And we kind of talked about this a little bit, Stuart, um, in our Facebook messenger about what the future holds for Lord Zed and just some of the theories that are out there, some of the theories that we certainly talked about. Do you expect him to pop back up here in season two uh, and even maybe beyond this? What I think they're going to do is I think he's going to become like a main villain for the back half of season two, or he's going to become a main villain for the next season. Now, I think you and I had the same idea of something that we both thought would be really cool if they did. Uh, and that is uh, if they decided that they brought him back for the movie specifically, when that, whenever that comes out, um, the uh, Jonathan Ant Whistle, Ant Whistle, that's his name, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that he's currently working on uh, directing. I think that would be a really cool way to connect it to the uh, show because you, uh, you don't really because like I think uh, I well, one thing that a lot of people bring up as like a concern about connecting the show with the movies is that not enough people watch the show. So if they try to put the movie for a mainstream audience, uh, it would definitely add a lot of confusion because then people would probably skip it because then they would assume that you have to watch the show in order to watch the movie. And let's face it, most people who just want to go watch a movie aren't going to do that. But I think with a character like Zed, you don't need necessarily have to have a full on explanation. I think in the movie, you could just drop a line like, yeah, no, no, none of the Rangers ever defeated him like they do in Dino Fury. And, uh, you know, if they even comes up of how he was de defeated before in the movie, you could just say, hey, it's Zed. He always finds a way to come back or something like that. Uh, so. You know, it'd be like one of those things where I don't think audiences would care if they don't explain how Zed is suddenly back. But for the fans that do care and the fans that want to know, they know where they can look to find the answers to that. You know, they can look to it in the show Power Rangers Dino Fury. Uh, again, I don't think that's what they're doing with it, but it would be kind of cool if they did. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. I mean, even the leaked um, script um, in regards to the um, new rebooted Power Ranger movie, uh, when the Illuminati addressed it last year, um, one of the things that they said was that Z that Zed was possibly going to be the villain uh, of the movie in the leaked script um, that Illuminati wind up getting his hands on. And then even as recent as maybe like two weeks ago, when the script itself kind of leaked also, um, by uh, Jinsaku for certainly coming through with that information. He even mentioned in the script that it showed Lord Zed as the potential villain in the movie. Now, again, that's a script that was written back in 2019. We do have a, a completely different writer on board with the movie. And as of right now, it feels very much like Hasbro is kind of up in the air in regards to really wanting to make sure that this new script is, is, is absolutely perfect before they push through with it. So whether or not Lord Zed pops up in the movie, who's certainly knows but if we wanted to ask ourselves the question like if he does pop back up in the movie 
How does he come back? I do love the fact that a show like Dino Fury establishes sort of that continuity uh, for it to certainly be there. And, and again, I, I'm I'm very much with you, Stuart. I do think that he will pop back up in season two at some particular point in time. I think I was even uh, I don't I didn't watch the video, but I saw a thumbnail by um, another YouTuber, uh, George Jr. I think he even teased the idea like could Serpentera certainly come back, right? I mean, we had a clip show a, a clip of Serpentera in here we even had a clip of like the dark rangers um from the mmpr season also in here so who's to say that when we go into season two of dino fury not only do we get lord zed with his staff but maybe even serpentera maybe even some dark rangers for our dino fury rangers to certainly have to uh face off against i just think the idea of knowing that you have a legit reincarnated lord zed out in the universe he's gotta make an impact in some way and i definitely do think it'll happen in season two for sure whether or not he's going to be the main villain or the back half villain i think if anything he probably deserves to be the main villain just based off of who he is i guess the question would then still become Stuart: do the dino fury rangers defeat him or like every other season of mmpr the rangers don't defeat him and his 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 true outcome then potentially comes in the movie. Could we have both, Stuart? I would love to see it happen in the in this series and in the movie also, if possible. Connective would, tissues, man. Yeah, that would be really sick. Uh, you know, and I think it's all going to depend on how big of a role he plays in next season. If it's a big role, if we see him in multiple episodes, I do think the Dino Fury Rangers will defeat him. But if he if it, if we go like the first five or six episodes and he's not even seen, I'm going to say this. I'm, I don't think he's going to be defeated in season two if that's the case. I think, yeah, uh, he'll be a main villain if, if they are planning on, you know, destroying him in the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm eager to see it. I'm eager to see if, they, uh, if they're if they able to defeat him or if he escapes once again. Um, so, um, guys, we definitely want to know your thoughts in regards to um, the appearance of Lord Zed. Did it live up to your expectations? Did it not? Definitely go ahead and let your thoughts be known. Uh, but I definitely do think the future is wide open for Led's, uh, Lord Zed to return. And I, de I definitely do think he pops back up again in Season 2. But listen, while Lord Zed certainly stole the show in here, can we talk a little bit about Ollie this week, uh, who, to me, uh, truly had a, a great spotlight episode in here so shout out to kai moya uh for coming through as ollie because i absolutely loved kai in this episode or i absolutely loved kai in this episode as ollie probably his best episode so far this season if you ask me and it really just continues to grow sort of the ollie character so the beginning of this episode we see everybody trying to get their halloween costumes and preparations ready around the around the office um ollie boasts about the idea that nothing scares this guy and it really leaves it up to the the rangers to decide you know what we're gonna go ahead and put together a little haunted trail to try and scare the crap out of you uh and ollie winds up uh taking up the gauntlet here in this episode uh and at first definitely doesn't seem like nothing's really getting to this guy honestly Stuart, as he's going through there and then of course he winds up confronting not only the monsters but lord zed himself and while he states nothing scares him Stuart, i gotta say considering the danger that this man was facing uh, and even having sort of um, knowing the full extent of what he was up against to still want to fight and save his friends despite everything that you certainly know. Screw being scared. I think Ali truly did show just not only his bravery, but his courage uh, in this episode. So, I mean, does anything truly scare Ali? Uh, well, you know, I, I thought it was very adorable at the end when he says, like, the big thing that scared him was uh, not the fact of himself uh, losing himself, but like losing his friends. Yeah, but I yeah, I guess there's, really well. yeah, and, and I do know people, uh, you know, in a who are kind of similar to that in that sense of like, just, you know, they're not really like, I have one friend in particular who will joke about this a lot, uh, who, who like constantly will say, yeah, I'm not honestly afraid of dying. Honestly, I welcome it when it comes. Not, not that he's suicidal, nothing like that, right, nothing dark yeah, like yeah. that, but he's yeah. always been very curious on what death is like. And that's why the idea of like getting killed doesn't really scare him. Uh, so that's what kind of Ollie reminded me of in this episode is that, you know, I don't think he was 
worried about himself getting hurt. Like, you know, at the end when he mentions it was, it's just the idea of losing his teammates or the people around him. Uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I thought that was a kind of an adorable, uh, like character moment for him, you know, especially yeah. because throughout the series to me, he's kind of portrayed as like the bigger jerk out of the team, uh, <laughs> just with how stubborn he is. Uh, yeah, and so it is cool to see that he does have a soft spot though in this episode. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Um, I, I did, I did kind of dig that line, especially because it does show, it, it does show extremely well in this episode, just how much he truly was fighting to try and get his friends back. His willingness, despite knowing the history of Lord Zed going up against an overlord, right? Um, I, I just really like the way that Ollie's brain is wired, and I think for me, that's one why I'm a fan of his character so much. Um, but yeah, I dug it. I mean, even faced. Uh, with a certain danger to be able to have that bravery and courage and, and fortitude to go back out there to go ahead and save your uh, save your teammates, uh, I think really did go a long way for him in this episode. So I really do like the way that he's wired as a character. But I, I thought his astronaut suit was pretty great. Like you mentioned, the idea that they um, the costumes that they had felt very them, and I thought mm -hmm. that it was it was absolutely excellent for him in this episode. But Stuart, I keep telling people all the time, a million Ali is a thing. I, oh yeah, <laughs> a million Ali is a thing. There's some people that don't want to accept it or just don't see it, but I truly do see it uh, when they when they talk with each other, and I wind up seeing it again here in this episode. Just the just the back and forth, the picking on each other sort of thing, right? Making fun, lightheartedness. Um, you know, there are even moments when Amelia feels like she like falls into a little puddle of you know goo because she just feels so great about how adorable ollie is i mean the fact that she even i think she even referenced it again here when she when he says something about why you know what scares him about the idea of his you know not you know his friends being gone sort of thing um i think she even brings it up again in like episode was it episode nine on the camping trip when he's being all nerdy with his technology? And she's like, isn't he adorable or isn't it adorable seeing him in that mindset? So there are like little cute nods towards each other and little picking fun at each other. I really do think it's a thing. And I do think that by the end of this season or end of season two, there might be something there in, regard, in regards to shipping these two characters. But maybe, maybe that's just me, Stuart. No, no, I see it too. Uh, you know, I think like the biggest thing is that because uh, they both seem to in their own way really love a challenge. And so the biggest thing that they have like with the two of them is that you got Ollie who just doesn't believe in the supernatural and then Amelia who does. And I like how you kind of have both of them trying to prove each other wrong, but also not trying to not trying to fully like uh get them to give up and you know their beliefs uh if that makes sense like I, i'm sure like you know amelia would never want ollie to give up on science and much like how ollie would never want amelia to give up on her hobbies of you know investigating the supernatural but at the same time they both have that kind of well i gotta prove this person's wrong still <laughs> you know uh the kind of thing going on between the two of them it, it's kind of like uh did you ever see the amazon show uh I think it was uh, Good Omens was the title, the Neil uh, I've Gaiman heard of it. Uh, show. I've heard of it. I haven't watched it, though. I've heard of it. It, it. it was just so great. You have one dude from hell, one dude from heaven. Both of them have very oh, completely that's with David, different ideologies. David Tennant, right? Yes. Yes. yes I've it's seen an it amazing you. show. And their right. chemistry is so great because they're like best friends, but they have such different ideologies. And that's how I feel about Amelia and Ollie. Like, I think their chemistry, uh, you know, is great because of how much they disagree together. But yet yeah. they still stay friends throughout the entire season. Yeah, opposites definitely do attract. Um, and I, I definitely do think that's a perfect example of um, of that case happening here between these two. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong by the time we get to season two, but um, I, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. Um, quick uh, shout out to Solon in here also um, there for the moral support for Ollie, I guess. Um, um she says, I'm here if you need moral support when he starts trying to fight Zed. And then she decides, you know what? I got to I got to get you out of this situation and winds up teleporting him back to the command center uh, and just great history lesson. We've seen Solon fight before, haven't we? I think we saw her face off against Slyther, if I'm not mistaken, briefly um, on his debut. Um, but, yeah, I guess the idea of asking Solon to help Ollie fight against Lord Zed is probably <laughs> a terrible idea, though. 
Yeah, yeah, very, very different levels of power right there. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, man, overall, I, I was really impressed with this episode, man. Uh, Lord Zed showed out. Thank you so much, Simon Bennett, for really doing him justice again when I was really terrified and worried about not only how he would be utilized, but also the voice acting work. Uh, I think they com immediately... Uh, uh, squashed all my concerns and still allowing this Halloween special to truly give Ollie a great spotlight in here uh, to show his bravery and courage uh, and, and really have some great costumes overall. I, I, I'm in, I was impressed, man. I probably like this um, Halloween special probably more than the, the Beast Morphers one. And that's saying something because I was a really I was a big fan. Not to say that I hate it all of a sudden. I still love that episode. I mean, Zo uh, uh, you know, um, Zoe is a freaking um viking give it to me all day long i'll absolutely take it um but um yeah there was something about this halloween special i absolutely was a big fan of though but uh, what about you Stuart? oh yeah definitely and yeah i too also like the uh, previous halloween special uh you know despite my nitpicks about it like not feeling fully in character with like the costumes the characters chose uh specifically with Devin. i mean to me it felt like he was the type of person that would have embraced halloween but then having him be like the one who's like too cool for it really kind of fell out of character for me but with that nitpick aside, I did think the Beast Morphers Halloween special was actually really funny and had some hilarious visual gags, specifically with Zoe's Viking. I thought they they had a lot of fun. But this one, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed just with uh, them bringing Lord Zed back, him feeling like the same Lord Zed that we had like back in season uh, season two of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Like, uh, And the fact that they refer to him as the most evil point of Zed I thought was interesting because – um, when you look at him in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers over time, due to the like complaints that you get from uh, parents, uh, you know, to the networks, they had to make him so much uh, sillier, like, you know, episode mm. after episode. And that's why in, you know, in season three, you have him getting married to uh, Rita. Yeah, that the marriage staff, squabbles like, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's like they almost forgot that his staff turns into a snake because we don't see that anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it could just be a production thing, like maybe it was too expensive, but you know, things like that. They definitely tried to make him like sillier and sillier over time. And here it feels like they went back to like the very beginning of season two of uh, of Power Rangers, and that's the Lord Zed that that was resurrected, the one that we first saw. Yeah, that's that, that. I definitely agree with you. That's definitely the, the vibes that I'm certainly getting from it. Also, oh, real quick, honorable mention before I, before we move on to uh, people's comments, um, we did get a bunch of Dino keys utilized in here in this episode. I'm surprised that they actually didn't write them down. I apologize, guys. I, I didn't take note of of all the um, Dino keys that we wind up being utilized in this episode, but they did that. Um, again, the I thought to, I thought the direction in here was great. Second unit action. Um, I thought the the fight sequences were handled really well, uh, and then we did get ourselves a um, a solo morph too by Ollie. Since we're talking about Ollie. I'm trying to remember if we've ever had another solo morph morph like something wants to tell me that maybe maybe um, Amelia had a solo morph once maybe even Izzy I, I could be wrong. Um, do you recall another solo morph this season? There definitely are, but I don't remember if they happen after this episode uh, or if there were some before, but I, uh, I definitely I'm pretty sure there's solo morphs in this. I, I I gotta say, man, I did like I do like Kai's morph. Um, getting the opportunity to see it just by itself. You know, the one thing that I love about Izzy's is her her tiger claws that she sort of throws up and then like throws into the ground and her hair and everything. Thing like that it it's been getting an opportunity to see kai in here you know i think like when when i'm watching it with he, when he's with other people and i see him punch the ground i'm like that's cool and all but actually hearing the emphasis that ollie puts behind his punch he's like Ugh! i was like oh <laughs> shit like he's He's here for a fucking fight. Uh, and I, I I love the energy, man. I love the energy that Ali really, really brings uh, to, to this show. Um, I do feel like Ali is a character who definitely at times when it's not his spotlight episode can kind of fall to the side a little bit. And he's relegated to like really cheesy dad jokes and stuff. Right. Like even even in that previous episode, Amelia's like, hey, man, you got to get new material. You know, when uh, Izzy's like, all right, everybody take a five minute break. And he's like, five minutes. Minutes. I was hoping for 25 and she's like hours or some shit like that. I can't remember what the line was, but I, I 
I, when he's not relegated to just really cringeworthy jokes, I really do enjoy Ali as a character in here, man. So um, uh, I really appreciated his solo more if we got this episode. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would definitely agree with that. I'd say like one thing funny about this season though, when you when you bring up like uh, the the jokes, I do love how a lot of times they'll come come to they'll they'll bring back jokes that you know feel very dated now. But for like like the first time I can think of in Power Rangers, they're commenting on how cheesy and dated the uh, jokes are some of the times. Like what it was a uh, it was. Um, a uh, hobby that like uh when they're in the zord said let's rock because they were fighting like a rock monster and then is he is immediately like wow cringe yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely that social commentary that like uh that um fourth wall breaking almost to a certain extent it's pretty funny yeah. uh let's see here guys but remember at the end of the day guys these are just simply our a plus opinions we want to know yours though so what do you guys think about episode number 14 of dino fury let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below guys um